Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. We have a lovely mid-May day. You know, sun's out and it's not raining. You know, the not raining part is uh, very unusual this spring. I'm uh, in Ottawa. This is uh, Brown's Inlet behind me. The building that you can see behind the willow tree is on the other side of the road running across the bridge here is uh, First Avenue uh, Public School. So my three boys uh, are graduates from that school and uh, then they went to Glashen and uh, Glebe uh, High School now. So, you know, there's a lot of good memories uh, with that school. I spent many an hour in the schoolyard with them, uh, you know, which is a good thing because you get to meet all the other parents and stuff. It's a very, you know, social thing when you have kids and, you know, a lot of your network of friends and stuff turns out to be the parents of the other kids that your friends happen to have playdates with. So basically, you know, your kids choose, <laughs> choose them, their friends, and then through their friends' parents, you get to know lots of people. But anyway, um, no rain, which is wonderful. We've had tremendous amounts of rain this spring. There was a um, trough, a very powerful trough and persistent trough over North America this last winter. So it was very, very cold. We had loads of snow, huge amounts of uh, snowpack, you know, up in the watershed beating the Ottawa River. And then combined with all the excessive amounts of rainfall, as you know, we've had massive amounts of uh, flooding for people along the Ottawa River and the uh, tributaries that feed into it in Ottawa. There's also been flooding in, in uh, other parts of Ontario and Quebec and the Maritimes and Canada. And of course, in the U.S., we've had tremendous amounts of flooding um, in large parts of the U.S. I mean, it started, you know, the, the trough was just sitting over, over um, North America, extending far down into the states. So we, you know, low pressure, unsettled weather, lots of precipitation, whether it be snow, you know, snow in the winter and now uh, rainfall. So in fact, there's almost no drought conditions anywhere in the U.S. right now. It's all, um, you know, it's all much wetter than normal. And of course that water has to go somewhere. So if you're a property owner, you need to um, make sure that water doesn't find its way into your property. So, so this video is kind of a practical video to give lots of tips and stuff for people um, that are concerned, uh, you know, people that want to protect their property, stop water getting into the basement etc. So I'll first of all I'll talk about the people on the river. You know if you're if you're on the river, Ottawa River, you know two years ago, t May 2017, we had a one in um, one in 50 or one in 100 year flood um, and uh, you know it wreaked havoc to people living along the river including um, a friend of mine in uh, Fitzroy Harbour. It trashed his place. So you know a few years ago when this happened I really really highly recommended to people if they live along the river floodplain you know take the insurance money and uh, jack up your house when hurricane sandy came ashore and uh, overtopped the uh, breakwaters uh, in new york and flooded lots of new york there were several hundred thousand people in low-lying areas next to the uh, ocean that got uh, their houses flooded and there were many many other people that avoided by a narrow margin getting their houses flooded from the storm surge from Sandy. So what they did there in New York State was say okay we're gonna grandfather in the requirement that if you sell your house in order for somebody to buy your house and get a mortgage from the bank get get lend money borrow money from the bank the house would have to be insured of course and in order to be insured, the house had to be jacked up about uh, one story, about 10 feet, 9, 10 feet or so above the pre-existing level. So the average price to do that for houses in, in New York affected by Sandy or even not affected directly by Sandy was about 30,000. So basically this rule dropped the property values about 30,000 but it meant that people's houses would be secure against storm surges from a similar flood so 
On the Quebec side of the Ottawa River, the government's offered a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy out people that are right close to the river. You know, people are saying, oh, it's nowhere near enough. Our house is way more than that. But, you know, many million dollar houses along the river are now actually more like half a million dollars or a quarter of a million dollar houses along the river because, you know, or smaller places are even unsaleable uh, because you need a buyer and the buyer is very aware of flooding in 2017 and also flooding now and there's no way people are going to buy these places so the value uh you know the value is like anything else in in um it's all in the market is determined by supply and demand so if there's no demand then the prices plummet until they reach a level that there is some demand is stimulated and then there'll be buyers so if you live along the river and your house is being flooded out you know two twice in the last uh you know, in 2017 and now in 2019, where the water even went higher than in 2017, it was about 25 centimeters higher, and the water levels are still high. I walked down to Britannia Beach um, just yesterday, and there, the the water level is uh, there's still lots of water from the northern reservoirs coming down, so the water level is still extremely high. So it's uh, really important if you have a, if for people that are are getting these perpetual floods you know if you got flooded a couple of years ago and flooded again well you obviously have a big problem in your location it's gonna happen again and it's gonna happen extremely frequently and uh, you know the only way to maintain any value in your property is to jack it up one story okay uh, the technology is getting very very good they drive these posts into the ground and then they basically jack up your house they they uh, you know, if there's a basement, it's a more of an issue because you, uh, you know, you have to just jack up the, the house frame and, uh, you know, other things have to happen. But, you know, a lot of houses along the river don't have base basements and uh, they, they're just frame houses, wood frame houses. And, you know, a uh, jack can be on each of the four corners and they can be jacked up slowly, you know, one story. And then you have all this space underneath to store sailboats and canoes and life jackets and all kinds of stuff and uh, your house you, you, you have a peace of mind you can enjoy the river you don't have to worry and get post-traumatic stress disorder every time it rains and sort of panic and you know every spring uh, you know reach this panic situation where the river is rising more and more is it going to come up and flood my house again sort of thing so um, the only way to preserve value of any properties that were flooded, I would say, this year and also in 2017 in the Ottawa region are to jack up the house. There's, there's, there's no other way. If, you, if you're going to live in that spot and enjoy the river, your house has to be at a higher elevation. So, you know, if you get insurance money for this flood, uh, you know, the house may become uninsured for flood and then, but if you jack it up, then, then uh, you, don't, you won't have a problem. Okay, so I can't emphasize this uh, more strongly. Um, there's, you know, abrupt climate change is here. It's with us. I don't really like the term the new normal because, uh, you know, we were here in a smooth, slowly increasing temperature. Now we're spiking up to another state, a much warmer state. So we've only begun this spike up in the last uh, decade or so. So what's happening now is no new normal. It's gonna get a lot worse as we continue climbing this vertical curve and go to a much warmer state. You know, the Arctic is losing the sea ice extremely rapidly. We've had temperatures just in the last little while that are unbelievably hot up in Alaska and over the Arctic you know, like 20, 30 degrees Celsius, warmer than normal temperatures. You know, we're there, we're on this ro climate change roller coaster. It's like we're all living in the climate casino and our property can be destroyed, whether it be by a flood or tornado or, you know, wildfire or something else. So we, and nobody's gonna come and bail us out. We need to do things on our own. We can't expect you know, government programs to provide money for floods. Do you think there's, they have endless pots of money? No, uh, you know, so we, we have to rely on ourselves. So, so that, that, that's the only solution if you're living near a river. You need, to, you need to take any insurance money you get 
you know, don't replace buildings that were damaged at exactly and put them exactly the same level that they, the pre existing buildings were at when they got flooded. You need things elevated high if you're going to stay in that location and preserve any value for that property. Now, other people, you know, you don't have to live along a river to get nailed by a flood, right? We're getting, because the jet streams are slower and wavier, storms are moving more slowly and they're getting persistently sort of stuck in these certain locations. So we're also, for every degree Celsius increase in temperature, the atmosphere can hold 7% more water vapor. So there's way more water vapor in the atmosphere. They're, they're, the, the storms, when they occur, um, are moving slower and that extra water vapor feeds huge amounts of energy because of the massive latent heat of, of uh, evaporation and, uh, and uh, the opposite effect condensation. As people in my oceanography class well know because I've been talking about that in detail and they're writing their first uh, midterm today. This is a compressed course. I teach, I teach two three-hour lectures per week the course covers the same amount of, of material as a regular university uh, course. Um, you know, it's a spring course, but it's compressed into half the time. So it, it's, uh, you know, I have to really work hard to keep, keep ahead of them in terms of the slides and everything else. And they're writing their first midterm soon. And I really was emphasizing this point. It takes one calorie per gram per degree Celsius is the, uh, the heat capacity of water. So to go from zero degrees Celsius to 100, you need 100 calories. But to go from ice, that gram of ice, to melt it into the water at zero, that needs 80 calories, 80 times the amount of energy. And the, to go take that one gram at 100 degrees Celsius, the boiling point, and create the water vapor, it, re it requires 540 calories. So Th those 540 calories that are transported up into the Arctic, for example, uh, by water vapor in, in the uh, winds, when they condense and, and create these storms, we get these massive storms. So if you're out, you don't have to be on a flood plain to be affected by floods. We're getting torrential rain um, events, you know, many, many months of rain in a day or two in many locations. So you need to really look at what's going on with your property. So. In Canada, the federal government is being pushed hard by insurance companies to release up-to-date digital elevation maps, DEMS. So Geographic Information System, GIS, uh, derived maps of showing elevations, extremely um, accurate elevations. And the insurance industry is going to take this and they're going to say, they're going to tell whole regions of neighborhoods, well, your, your house is not insurable anymore because you're, you can be affected by these floods. So um, all of these flood maps around uh, Canada, I'm sure the same thing is happening in the U.S. We need, we have great technologies to measure, to create these digital elevation maps. We need maps of this within all cities and things so that you can, when you're buying a house, you can see what sort of local elevation your place has that you're thinking of buying. And if there's a flash flood, if there's torrential rains, you will know whether your house will be affected or not beforehand from these digital elevation maps. Okay, so let's, you have a house now and you have to protect it. So what do you do? The most important thing, and you're not on a river, the most important thing is to have decent drainage around your house. You need to slope the ground away from the walls of your house. You need to have, if you have eaves troughs, you need to direct the water well away from your house. If you have a yard surrounding your house, there's lots of different things you can do. You can put in these French drain systems if you want. What I did is I, my entire backyard was, was dead grass. It would never grow in a garden. So what I did is I dug up the, the dead grass, which would never grow because I got way too much shading and those trees are enormous and water wouldn't even drip down to the ground. I dug down about a foot and I put um, anti-weed fabric and then I put gravel and finer and finer stone, stone dust at the top. I bought a guy's driveway on Kijiji, a flagstone driveway, and I pried up the uh, flagstones myself, and basically over a month or two, a number of years ago, I, I laid out a flagstone backyard. So this is a huge French drain, and it keeps the water away from my house. So there's loads of things you can do with sump pumps, back check valves, etc. 
So please investigate and protect your property. Thanks, thanks for listening.